Multiple myeloma is a cancer that presents most often within the bone marrow. It is a cancer of cells called plasma cells. Plasma cells are the cells that all of us have in our bodies and are responsible for producing antibodies that help our immune system to fight off infections or foreign invaders. The problem in multiple myeloma is that those plasma cells become dysfunctional. They no longer divide in a normal way, they become cancerous, and they're out of control. Antibodies themselves have the potential to revolutionize our treatment approaches for patients with cancer. CD38, which is the antibody that was approved by the FDA, what we're doing though is we're trying to further functionalize or make that antibody more effective, and we do that by delivering a small radioactive molecule that is delivered by the antibody specifically to the multiple myeloma cells so we can seek them out and destroy them on an individual basis. We have a long history at the center at the Fred Hutch at the Sarah Cancer Care Alliance um, of being able to take discovery that we make in the laboratory and bring it to patients rapidly. In the past three weeks there's actually been approval of three different agents for the treatment of multiple myeloma in various settings and this is a dramatic uh, advance. As far as I know, in the history of FDA approvals for cancer, I don't know that there's been a time when three drugs have been approved over a three-week period all for the same disease. It reflects the amazing amount of research advance that's been made in myeloma. They're incredibly promising and offer our patients an option that they previously did not have. We were involved in clinical trials that led to the approval of these agents. We were involved in trials with the CD38 antibody that I mentioned, known as daratumumab, and the other antibody which targets something called SLAM-F7. But that antibody, uh, we also were involved in the initial studies uh, with patients. In fact, it was a way that patients get early access to those agents by coming to our center and enrolling on those clinical trials. Because we've done so well with multiple myeloma, patients are living longer and longer, but ultimately the disease comes back and we run out of options. All of a sudden I have three new options to to give to those patients, and that's just FDA-approved drugs. That doesn't include all the research studies that we have going on. So we have the opportunity to treat patients with new agents that will become available now, that are now available because of this FDA approval. And then beyond that, we have research studies at the center so we can offer patients yet additional approaches to target and treat their disease. We're definitely making dramatic advances. All of those advances, I would argue, are the result of treatments that were originally tested in clinical trials. So when patients enroll in those trials, it affords them the opportunity to get something they may not be able to access otherwise. It also, at the same time, allows us to answer questions that will hopefully enable the next generation of drugs to be approved by the FDA and allow us to treat patients more effectively. When someone has a diagnosis of a relatively rare malignancy, they should seek the opinion of people who are most expert in the field. And at the Center Cancer Care Alliance, we are a union of experts from the Fred Hutch and the University of Washington, in the case of children's, for children as well, who focus day and night on very specific diseases and develop real expertise in that area. So I encourage everyone, whether they're going to stay for treatment or not, to get an opinion at our center because we pride ourselves on being able to help patients in any, at any point along their disease course, not just when they run out of options, which often is the case patients come to see us at that juncture, but even early on so that we can help tailor their therapy. And I can't tell you the number of times I have worked with physicians in the community to provide them with our recommendations and insights so that we can work in a collaborative way. Because what I see in my clinic day in and day out is multiple myeloma and some other malignancies, lymphomas, but it's pretty focused and specific and I have the luxury of really becoming an expert in that area. Uh, I think that we offer patients the opportunity to have that expert opinion as a part of their care. The combination of induction therapy, stem cell transplant, and often some form of maintenance or additional therapy has so far proven to be the best approach that we have to effectively treat patients, prolong their life, and maintain their quality of life. The diagnosis of multiple myeloma is a serious one and is a diagnosis that um, can really shift and alter folks' lives and we're aware of that. Patients come to us at a point where they have a lot of questions and a lot of concern. It is our job, it is my job, to make sure first and foremost that patients understand their disease and then beyond that that we put together a plan that they understand and are excited about participating in so that we can get their disease under control 
and ensure that we preserve their quality of life and prolong their life. And we can do that effectively. So a patient has a new diagnosis of myeloma. If they're watching this video and they're concerned and they're worried and their question is, you know, what options do I have now? The answer is we have lots of options, growing options, and we're doing better than we ever have. I think if, as a myeloma physician, this is an incredibly exciting time because we are able to do things we could never do before that prolong folks' lives and make a difference.